more than you ever wanted to know about hot glue. Before you actually work with hot glue in this class, I kind of want to blitz you with a bunch of information. Uh, part of the reason I want to do that is some of you have probably worked with hot glue before or have watched little tutorials online on how to go and do clever things with hot glue or uh, have heard that hot glue is like a cheap and nasty way of doing things with costumes uh, or just uh, you don't get that it's uh, a bigger and more complex set of things than just what you may have previously experienced. So I want to go into <clears throat> more detail about all the details of hot glue. Uh, tip number one, hot glue is bulky, so you can use it to make quick, strong 3D surface decoration on all sorts of objects. That's actually the thing it does better than anything else is it makes very fast, very bulky, lumpy surface texture where you want it. You can then take that lumpy surface texture and go and uh, do antiquing on it. You can go and uh, build it up in layers. You can go and make that surface texture into an actual object in itself. Number two, hot glue conveniently peels off of cooking parchment, and so it can be used solo as a material for making flat openwork jewelry. It also can be made to use things like lace and anything else that looks sort of like this. Ah, number three, putting a pattern under the parchment helps you make complex forms. Tip number four. Forming parchment into shapes allows you to make free-form dimensional shapes of hot glue, such as this. Tip number five, hot glue willingly envelops other objects, including sticks, pop tops, wire to form armatures, and other things that you can use to make it stronger or bendier or have things that you can do with it that are more complex than what you can do with purely hot glue alone. Number six, hot glue will always stick to itself. Even if one part of the object was glued days or even years before a new part was glued on, this makes repairs, additions, and large fused projects work. Tip number seven. You can therefore break down a project into sections, just like a sewing pattern, to make complex 3D costume pieces. Such as this. This is a collar made to look like an Elizabethan whisk of very large size. Uh, it has wire in it so that it can be bent to shape. Uh, it is made out of many individual pieces all stuck together, originally made flat and then put together. Uh, it can accept paint and this particular object has been painted and reused and redone uh, for several different occasions. It gets kicked all over the place and it is tough as nails. It's an unkillable Elizabethan whisk rough. Tip number eight, different types of hot glue can be freely blended together to form variegated colors and textures while in liquid form, either mixed in the gun or with a spatula on exit or with a heat gun or iron. This, for instance, is a sample made to resemble a fairy wing. It's a series of different kinds of hot glues all put together, messed with with heat guns and layers and so on and so forth. They all stick together. They all are mutually compatible and you can go and make them blend into uh, a really quite elaborately complex series of uh, colors and textures. 
Tip number nine, you can use another source of heat to reheat hot glue to alter it in other ways. A heat gun can shine it, remove cobwebs, fuse together pieces, and bend it if your shape needs it. But be careful, because you can melt it all. And you can iron on pre-made glue shapes to fabric by ironing from the back of the fabric. Tip number 10, you can pour hot glue into silicone rolls, such as those used for cooking fondant and Fimo to make small embellishments that you can then fuse together. Tip 11, hot glue won't stick to ice. So if you want to make a sphere, start with a water balloon. Transparent hot glue makes great light diffusers and can blend in other clear plastics seamlessly. Now, there are varieties of hot glue guns. Uh, vintage craft glue guns, thermograp swing lines, Sears glue guns use vintage high temperature 7 16 inch sticks, some with ridges for feed. Thumb feed ones have back flush problems with modern multi temp glue. Thumb feed, however, is the most precise. You have to, however, use it with the right kind of glue for the period. And so while you can get the gun, it's really hard finding the sticks. Other varieties of hot glue guns. There's an ultra cool or cool shot, uh, the cool tool, different names of them. Uh, they go and have even lower temperature than uh, modern cool temperature or low temp glue guns. Uh, they're especially good for foam and plastics and working with kids. They're nearly impossible to burn yourself with these. Uh, the battery ones are even portable. They won't burn your fingers. Uh, the sticks, however, are expensive and hard to find, but interchangeable. There is one thing uh, that is, however, trouble is this is weaker, much, much weaker hot glue than even uh, multi-temp or low-temp. Uh, if you go and put a multi-temp stick or a low temp stick into one of these uh, ultra cool ones, they make the glue come out very sluggishly, which has some uses for surface decoration. It's really mostly kind of frustrating, but you can actually use the one and the other to force it to come out kind of like a miniature sausage. Uh, I don't think there's much use of that for costume purposes, but I think if you were doing like really delicate surface decoration on something like uh, trying to do it in scrapbooking where you wanted to do like a little fine cross hatching and you wanted it to come out like these little worms, uh, that would actually do something kind of interesting. Low melt guns, uh, they use low melt or all temp mini sticks of glue. They're less burn prone than other mini glue guns. Uh, never get a mini glue gun that is a high temp mini glue gun. It just, it's, it's not a good idea. Uh, you burn yourself all the time and uh, almost all the sticks that work on smaller glue guns are in fact multi temp, uh, which is code for sort of low temp pretty much. Um, so you're going to do much better. You're going to get much better results if you have a low temp glue gun for a small glue gun. I don't know even why they sell high temp of the small glue guns. Dual melt. Uh, those are my favorite. They can use high temp, all temp, uh, webcaster sticks, and variable temp. Uh, you, If you use high temp uh, glue, you can get harder results. That is to say, the, the, it will be stiffer. Uh, if you use all temp, all temp is really more like low temp. Uh, it should be used in low temp mode only for safety, unless you want bubbling napalm uh, near your fingers. Uh, just pretty much 90% uh, of the time you want to use things on low temp. High temp. High temp, all temp, and webcaster sticks are what you can use with that. Uh, you, if you use high temperature sticks, you will get uh, stiffer and harder results uh, in your finished object. It's, it's just stronger, stiffer. Uh, 
Old hemp flows fast and runny, but has high burn potential. There are times, however, where you literally, you do put in the lower temperature or the old temperature sticks and run it at high temperature so that you can just get enough glue to come out in a dribbly mess to do a particular thing that you're trying to do. Uh, it's, it's really rarely rare when you want that, but um, there are occasions when you do that. That's why it's nice having the two temperatures on a gun uh, so that you can go and have the high temperature when you do want it, either for high temperature sticks or for making low temperature sticks turn into the bubbling napalm. Uh, I don't suggest it for 99% of the stuff, but there are a few occasions when you want to do that. Uh, now, the one thing that is good for getting those high temperature little glue guns for, it's not that they're actually good, but they only cost a dollar. And if you have colored mini glue sticks, uh, every time you use them and then you want to change to a different color, it's costing you a couple of sticks in the changeover. And because some of those sticks are very expensive, that can get very troublesome. So if you're using stuff to be mini sticks to, say, fill in a mold where having it be runny is not a problem, uh, and you're using those weird colored sticks for doing something very specific, uh, you can buy a dollar glue gun and dedicate that glue gun to only using that particular color of glue and not having to change it out ever, uh, thus going and making it so that you can get uh, nice runny stuff to fill in a little mold and uh, go and uh, not have to lose two higher cost sticks in order to do a changeover from one color to the other. Uh, there are also industrial high temp sticks um, and Guns, they usually have specific sizes that don't fit other guns. Don't bother getting them. Uh, the big uh, sets are also, they have wonderful things that they can do for, uh, like in factories, for sticking together cars and sticking together packages. But most of the time, these are not really what you need. For any kind of costume purpose. There, there are some things where or there's some guns that can go and do, uh, how can I say, that can do certain things. There's, uh, however, the, the, for your costume purposes, ignore this for a whole long time, okay? Uh, varieties of hot glue guns. There are also cobweb guns. Uh, these use web caster sticks or high temperature sticks. You can kind of get away with using all temperature sticks if you're just making the, the you know, uh, cobwebs for having your haunted house as compared to getting exactly uh, what you might want for like a movie or whatever. It's just, it's a glue gun that has a fitting in it that you can attach a compressor to. And it shoots air out as you're dribbling out the hot glue. And then when you dribble out the hot glue, that stuff shoots it every which way and it makes it into uh, cobwebs which uh, doesn't really have much of a costume purpose, but it does have uh, some very nice purposes for scenic. Uh, another variety are skillets. Skillets are various pots for melting sticks or glue pillows. Uh, they're often used for hair extensions and for melting ends and bits of leftovers. Uh, what I like the skillets for is literally for doing that for uh, all the little blurbs of hot glue that happen that dribble out of your hot glue gun that don't get used, all the failed projects that are hot glue that just didn't come out right and that you peel off of stuff, you can take all that and save it in little bags. And then what you do is you put it in the skillet when you haven't got anything better to do. 
and you melt it down into a goopy mess and then you pour the goopy mess into those molds that I mentioned, uh, the little uh, fondant molds, and you have little three-dimensional doodads later that are just being used out of your leftover dribblings of hot glue uh, that then can be uh, glued to some other object and painted over and made into uh, more elaborate items. It's just, it's a nice thing for whenever you have little blurbs of glue, you put it in a bin and every couple of years you go through your bin and you put it in the, the skillet and you pour out little bits of this into those fondant molds. And then you have lots of little extra pieces that you can use for composing stuff when you're in a hurry and trying to make a more complex object. Uh, another thing, pen type guns. Uh, there's Mod Melter. Uh, which you can get at Michael's, or at least you could get at Michael's. I'm not sure if you still can. Uh, the other two are vaporware in the US. Uh, they use long multi-temp mini sticks. Uh, Mod Podge sells Mod Melts, their own brand of these at Michael's. Uh, they're getting to be rare, less and less that they have at Michael's. They are meant for becoming uh, uh, filled into the little kind of molds you see at the down center. Uh, you can pretty much use anything in those kinds of molds at down center, but truthfully, the Mod Podge Mod Melter actually does do this job better. Uh, I have one, you can test it out, it's fun to play with. Um, However, you probably want to use the Mod Melter sticks for something more valuable and more interesting than making the little uh, frames and things in there. Um, there is another kind of pen type glue gun that's come out since I last made this uh, video. I will uh, show it to you when you are in the class uh, testing out the new forms of hot glue gun in the next lesson. Uh, there are also 3D printer pens, which are not actually a uh, hot glue gun. They're a glue gun for ABS or PLA printer plastic. Uh, there's 3Doodler and Air Pen. Uh, they make sort of funny little doodads that are kind of fra too fragile for costume purposes, uh, unless you were to wear them for, say, costume convention or cosplay where you didn't have to have it. Uh, deal with actors and backstage and <laughs> the kinds of things that will cause more fragile items to break. Um, there are also portable glue guns, which are useful for a few things where it's like really hard to get a, like when you're doing the inside of a furry costume and you can't reach in with the cord with your regular glue gun. They're good for that. Uh, or if you need a hot glue gun in a situation where there is not going to be any electricity. That's really rare, and so I don't tend to like these kinds of guns because they use a whole lot of battery power and they don't really work that well. But um, they do have their uses in certain kinds of uh, situations. Now, uh, you can also modify dollar store trigger feed hot glue guns into a thumb feed. You unscrew the dollar store mini stick gun, you remove the trigger mechanism, you cut away the back of the gun with penny cutter shears, you reassemble, you wrap the open hole to wiring with tape. Why? Thumb feed guns are much more precise than trigger feed ones. The trigger feed also hangs up on some weird sticks like say, candy canes. You can also purchase thumb feed guns with a bit of surfing. Trouble with the older thumb feed guns is they're all very high temperature and they tend to back flush with modern hot glue. So you have to get very high temperature glue sticks and you still should always, always, if you're doing a thumb feed gun, for heaven's sakes, wear gloves while you're operating it. Now, vintage hot glue uh, is kind of my holy grail. I hunt it down. It ends up being kind of expensive. People sell it as like weird collector's items. 
Uh, it has the advantage of being good for more sculptural things, for things where it has to be a stiffer uh, finished product. It's less good for 90% of what you need it for for costume purposes, but for that 10%, it's really, really good. Uh, modern industrial sticks also have, there are some kinds of modern industrial sticks that have the same kind of stiffness. Unfortunately, they don't come in the right sizes to fit in uh, non-industrial glue guns. So uh, that is one of the more frustrating things in my life uh, because it would be nice to be able to use more of this kind of stuff when one needed it. Okay, craft hot glue types. Multi-temperature is actually sort of low temperature. That is to say, it's not exactly high temperature and it's not exactly low temperature completely, but it's more low temperature than it's high temperature. It will really work in either sort of gun. Uh, it gets a little stiff in some low temperature guns uh, when you're running it on low. Uh, but for the most part, if it says multi-temperature, it's usually closer to the low than the high. Almost all the little sticks are in either that multi-temp or low temp, uh, which is to say it's low temp too. Uh, one of the things, multi-temp glitter sticks, those are all low temp. Whether or not they tell you they are, that is what they are. Uh, do not, do not, do not run them at high temp unless you are running them at high temp to fit them in a mold, or you're being as conservative as you can with your multi-temp sticks or your, your glitter sticks uh, by putting them into one of those dollar store hot glue guns, which for reasons passing all understanding are always high temperature. Uh, and uh, you, you don't want to swap it out for something else because the sticks are so valuable, you're just keeping one gun to do that. However, if you do that with one of those high temperature guns, your best bet is to actually plug it in, run it for a while, and then unplug it, plug it, replug it, plug it, replug it. Or if you're a crazy person like me, you get a dimmer cord like you would use for a lamp and you run that high temperature dollar store gun on the dimmer switch, making it into a low temperature gun that is just dedicated to that particular color of hot glue. So uh, glitter sticks have more inclination to back flush than anything else because they are all really low temperature sticks. Uh, and they also tend to clot with glitter. Uh, the glue part is very low temperature to keep it fluid with the, the glitter. And so you always wanna keep your gun in a pointed down position and watch the back of your gun for problems or better still wear gloves while you're working with that. Uh, other kinds of craft glue types, there's what they call keratin hair extension, which is low temperature sticks in um, colors that hair normally comes in. I don't know that they are actually keratin. I think they're just regular hot glue, uh, but they are meant to uh, make it so that you can glue in hair extensions uh, agreeably. Uh, then there are uh, sealing wax sticks. Those are considered high temp sticks, but they have to go completely liquid at high temperature. So they're kind of runny. They're odd in that once they dry, they're actually very stiff, unlike most other things that can get very runny uh, because they are made for going and uh, being fake sealing wax. And so they need to be able to form a pool that you can stick your sealing wax stamp into. Uh, they actually come in the greatest variety of cool colors, particularly cool iridescent colors. They all have a lot of mica in them and they're really, really beautiful. They're kind of expensive, but they're less expensive if you buy them in bulk online, order early from China. Um, and they, as I say, once they dry, they actually come out much stiffer. But while you're working with it, you're working with something that is very, very um, uh, fluid. 
And uh, so they actually work better than any other kind of stick when putting into those little molds for doing molded stuff. They also work well if you want to go and stick multiple layers of it together and do the heat gun thing where you make your own, you know, swirly iridescent plastics. Uh, they're very good for doing that. They're also very nice if you chop them into sections where you make things about uh, two inch long pieces and you put them together into your gun in two inch long pieces in varying colors. Then you get this sort of uh, iridescent swirl of two colors by going and varying it back and forth between those two. So you swap like say uh, the navy blue iridescent with the pink iridescent and it'll go between pink and blue and back and forth and purple and swirly and all sorts of fun stuff like that. Very artsy, uh, a lot of trouble, but very artsy. Uh, they also have ultra low temperature, super low temperature in colors, but they don't have a great variety of colors. Uh, however, again, if you want to go and play with that, you can go and use that by going and switching out your colors a bunch of times. Uh, again, with those low temperature sticks, uh, you're going to have trouble every time you want to switch. However, you can use the fact of when you're doing the switch to get those swirly effects. So um, don't uh, necessarily uh, write off the cool shot ones. They're the ultimate one to, if you're trying to teach a kid how to work with a glue gun, to do that reasonably safely. Okay, craft hot glue gun types, cobweb sticks. Uh, the sticks that are made for cobweb guns you can use in other kinds of guns. They're considered a high temperature stick. Uh, however, you can sometimes run them on lower temperatures uh, if you don't mind your hand getting a little tired pushing them through. And or you can run them on just a high temperature setting on your glue gun or on high temperature guns. Uh, the specially made cobweb sticks also dry harder and faster and shinier uh, when they're done. That's why they're used for blood drips on uh, 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 a haunted house uh, candles where you want to have bleeding, you know, blood. Uh, they also come in different kinds of glow-in-the-dark colors as well, which is fun for uh, uh, haunted house special effects and things. Uh, there's a particular brand, brand uh, Hot Blood, that is just for making uh, very shiny, stiff, fake blood. And it stays good and hard, uh, much like a, an old style hot glue would. And so it's good for sculptural effects because that's what it's made for. Expensive, but nice. Another one that's kind of hard to find is it comes in these fun little transparent little mini sticks and they're made for making fake worms and things for fly tires. That is to say people who are making lures uh, and fish hooks for uh, catching fish. Uh, this makes for really, really beautiful translucent effects. Uh, some of what you saw on that fairy wing was done with this sort of stuff. You can also mix parts of this stuff in with other uh, uh, ones of the small sticks, again, to get these sort of translucent weird effects. Uh, they're annoyingly expensive sticks, uh, but they do let you do some fun weird things. Oh, and this is also vaporware. Um, if you see this online and you think, ah, oh, eco glue, hot glues, made from plants, etc., etc. Uh, that is somebody's project in coming up with a design for a class. It's a wonderful idea, but nobody's ever actually made it. If you find it online and you're trying to find it as a product, it doesn't exist yet. Maybe it'll exist someday, but it really, really doesn't exist. Okay, craft hot glue types. Uh, it is also possible to home make uh, hot color melt glue sticks uh, if you are completely insane and have way more time than brains. 
Uh, it is, however, possible to make anything that you want with that sort of thing. Uh, you need to go and have a number of uh, things to do with that. You can go and add bits with crayon and all that stuff. Uh, however, what's even more fun is you can take uh, your crayons and stick them again in a mini glue gun that you have modified for the purpose and you can go and do crayon batik. Now crayon batik, for those of you who have ever tried crayon batik, it bleaches out eventually and doesn't really work that well. <laughs> But it's very nice for a fun kids project. And if you don't wash it too many times, uh, it doesn't go away too well. So what you do is you take a white garment, you dribble um, hot glue, or, I mean, you dribble crayon through to make your design. Uh, ideally, you'd also go and do a little bit of ironing of the design, and then you go and over dye the whole thing with like black or purple or some other dark color. Uh, in cold water dye, this is very important, uh, to get the rest of the garment to be dark around it. And then the last thing you do is you rinse it out, you rinse it out, you rinse it out, you rinse it out, you rinse it out again. And then after you rinse it out one more time, you then go and put it into hot water, melt away the crayon parts, and you should have a lovely garment or uh, hanging or whatever that's in the stark color with all these bright flower things. Now, the trouble is, of course, that the uh, dye in crayons is a bit transitive. And so uh, after you wash it a few times, you will eventually have a lovely uh, purple or black or whatever shirt with uh, basically white flower designs on it. I know I have one. Uh, it's beautiful even in its uh, mostly white form, but uh, you, you have to realize that it, it's, as I say, a fun project for a while, and it's fun for making a hanging, but if you wash it again and again, you will eventually lose the color out of it because crayons are a little... Uh, no. Uh, people also use the crayons to make different kinds of weird art with it that's just plain fun, uh, but... Uh, that's something else you can do with a dollar store hot gun. Another thing you can do with a dollar store hot glue gun, uh, yeah, you can get your cheap peppermint canes and stick them in the back of the hot glue gun. <laughs> That's why the uh, uh, how you can turn a cheap hot glue gun into uh, a non-trigger feed one. You can take your peppermint candy canes and stuff them in the back of a glue gun, and you can make weird little sculptures that you can eat like peppermint candy for your relatives at Christmas. Okay, safety. I love this poster somebody made in the upper right-hand corner. I craft, therefore I have no thumbprints. Uh, no, 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 no. You don't need to do that to yourself. I don't believe in doing that to yourself. Uh, first of all, uh, there are things such as gloves. The best gloves for it you can usually buy at a dollar store, or if you want to get really lavish, you go to Harbor Freight's uh, Harbor Freight Tools, and you can get like $3 mechanics gloves that are like black, like you see there, uh, and knit with a rubberized palm. Those ones are like perfect for doing it, and that's like as I say, about $3 for a pair. Um, but you can usually find ones that are more than adequate as well, uh, that are these same kind of rubberized palm things at a 99 cent store as well. However, for safety, what you need to remember is that contrary to instinct, tiny hot glue guns are less safe on average than full-size ones. Uh, the small ones, for some reason, uh, people always injure themselves with. The bigger ones, uh, less likely. Uh, use the temperature you actually need. Don't use a hotter temperature by default. 90% of what you do actually is better done at the low temperature setting. If you wear silicone palm gloves with high temperature or whenever gluing feathers or other fluffy stuff, that's good. Uh, if you have a fancy glue gun where you can put nozzles on it, uh, you can go and uh, 
put in the long nozzle and it ends up being safer because you're more precise in where you're putting it and how you're doing it and it keeps it a little further away from where your hands are. So even if you're going into an object where glue can get off of the tip of the gun and then sort of travel back as you're pushing forward onto your hand, uh, it, it gives it uh, like an inch or two more distance from where it can go and attack you. Um, you can also poke warm glue with popsicle sticks or the back of your fingernail tips. If you've ever wondered why when uh, you see my hands and I have like these nasty looking fingernails, uh, part of the reason I keep fingernails <laughs> instead of cutting them down, even though all the stuff I do at work makes my fingernails look really ratty, uh, is they're there so that I can go and tap down the hot glue with the back of my fingernails and not burn my fingers because your fingernail tips have a little bit of extra space on them and you can go and stick it onto the hot glue and your fingernails are there to protect, to, uh, protect you. Uh, never, ever, ever use low temperature or multi-temperature sticks in a vintage thumb feed glue gun. Just don't. It's, it's not safe. Wear gloves with any thumb feed glue gun, regardless of what temperature you're putting in. Uh, try not to leave guns plugged in and lying on the side for lengthy periods of time. Don't leave the guns lying on highly flammable materials. Cooking parchment, by the way, does not count. Um, I've never heard of a glue gun setting fire to anything, but there is a first time for everything. It's an electrical appliance. Do not leave it lying on highly flammable materials. It does heat up, it does get hot, and there's bound to be something that will set off that with a hot glue gun. Uh, when possible, park your gun in a holder. We have a bunch of holders in the costume studio that you can play with, uh, and you can see how they're, they're all ones that we made in-house, and you can see they're, they're really actually fairly easy to make. If you don't have a holder, use a silicone cook mat, a glass cutting board, or a metal cookie sheet. You can even make a safe, simple holder just by gluing a metal can, a glass jar, or a piece of big fabric bolt roll to a piece of cardboard to prevent tipping. Many glue guns can use toilet paper rolls. Okay, accessories you definitely want. Parchment paper to make glue stick to the project and not to the table. Uh, you want gloves for dangerous gloves jobs. You want some sort of homemade glue gun stand and an extended tip on the gun if possible. Those are the things that you're most likely to get good use out. Accessories you might want that can be handy. A cheap heat gun to melt cobwebs and shine surfaces. We have some of those in the costume studio that you can go and play with when we're doing these projects. Uh, silicone molds to cast doodads. Oh, by the way, silicone molds for like fondant and things like that. Uh, unless they're on sale at Michael's or something in the, the we're getting rid of it pile, uh, you would do better to order these by slow boat from China directly. You get much better uh, variety of things that you can order and uh, you pay much less for them if you order them direct from the source. Um, you can use uh, various type of silicone work mats to safely work with it and be able to peel up all of your little dribblings and thus be able to reuse them. They make weird little finger guards and pushers uh, for people who don't want to use the full gloves, though in my experience the finger guards are I, most of the time, if I'm going to get a burn from a glue gun, I'm, I'm not going to get it on the tip of my finger. I'm going to get it on some other part of my hand uh, that it just sort of runs into. So I, I never get the, the whole finger guard thing. But for some people, that just lets them do the poking thing that I do with my fingernails uh, uh, if they don't have fingernails. So 
Uh, there are a lot of weird specialty tips that have different uses. We have one particular glue gun that you can try that has a sort of flattening specialty tip, which was one of the things that made it possible to do some of the fancy things on uh, Amazing Maisie's uh, uh, pop-up tail. And uh, you can get order online custom-made glue gun stands if you don't want to make one yourself. So those are all things people might want to have. Uh, the first ones are the ones, however, you definitely do want to have. Ah, there are people who do things with hot glue that are really kind of amazing. Uh, there are a lot of artists who have figured out that this particular kind of thermoplastic is amazing. Uh, there's a lot of ones uh, that I have links to online. And uh, if you go and look up these lovely people uh, from your handout, you can go and uh, see the different crazy wonderful things they make. Uh, they Because they're not using it for costume purposes, they're doing all sorts of different weird things. They're artists, they play, they come up with different weird things. And so you end up finding things that they do that uh, you might not ordinarily think of. So for instance, this gentleman, he goes and has taken things where he makes like a, a series of lines of strings across the top, and then a pile of boxes that he covers with like plastic drop cloths. And then he dribbles glue over the strings down to the plastic drop cloths like rain. And then after it dries, he takes out the boxes and lifts the strings and you have like rain floating over a mountain. I don't know what use that is from a costume standpoint, but I, I think from a scenic standpoint, it's certainly possible. And you can see all these lovely sort of icy effects that he gets out of it. Just like amazingly beautiful. Uh, we have Michelle Kong here. She goes and does it with layers and lots of sort of freeform stuff. These giant dandelions or where she's taken bits of cord and then from the end of uh, like the, the um, uh, fishing line cord, she's done a series of little floaty things where you put glue on the tip and you make the, the sort of cobwebby string. She does a series of those off it and makes giant dandelions, which is like, how cool is that? John Medina, he does it in a series of little dribbles. Now these series of little dribbles are actually one of the great things you can do surface-wise for something. Uh, he's got it where he's using like translucent over other colors and then other ones where he's doing it as a solid and then painting it over, which is more like what you'd end up doing on a uh, costume. That ability of making the perfect little dribble Thing, that's actually something that uh, you should work on while we're doing the project that you will do when you're in the makeup room. Okay, then there's Clara Knox Bentham. Here you can see she also knows how to make perfect dribbles. That's what that necklace is made out of, is a series of perfect dribbles. And then she glues together the dribbles because you can always take hot glue and melt it to other hot glue. So you can make component pieces out of the glue, in this case, a bunch of dribbles, and then glue together the dribbles into the flowers. It's a very nice sculptural medium. Then these other pieces are where she's used the uh, fact that you can make lines onto the cooking parchment and she makes basically uses it to draw with then after it dries peels it up from the cooking parchment puts paint on it and then has it hang as a translucent sort of almost wire work like uh, uh, surface. You could make veils out of this, you could make capes out of it. And Jerry Sailor, she also goes and dribbles things from uh, 
uh, or has things hanging, but what she does is she dribbles the glue into liquids. So dribbles it into like warm water and then cooler water and gets different kinds of dribbles and then interconnects the dribbles into uh, chains and then hangs the dribbles as floating artwork. Again, something you could use scenically. Now this is something that you could more easily use costume-wise. Remember I said that you could take a, a balloon and fill it with water and freeze it in your freezer? Well, that's how you make these. So you can also go and make anything else that you can make out of a water balloon or any other shape that you can get to freeze up. So for instance, you can make a sculptural thing like uh let's say you were going to use a casting of something you you cast a head form like a, a skull form so you take your skull form and you use from that you go and you find a way to make an ice skull you use the you, know, you make a mold from the one to the other to the other to the other well you can end up also making cage-like things out of the hot glue if you can make the thing out of ice so anything you can make out of ice you can make a little doodad out of glue you can also make it as flat pieces you can make it as rounded pieces that go over stuff so if you start with like those a uh, bigger size piece of bent ice uh, like what you would make if you were to um, put ice in uh, um, a larger kind of balloon, you can make sections of that all being in the, the glue and then later fuse them together into larger objects, which is what you see here. And this is another person who works on flat pieces on the parchment, and she then takes the flat pieces and puts them together into these other sorts of shapes. She's made whole chandeliers and umbrella covers out of these sort of things. And then this person makes lace. which looks pretty splendid to me. And another person who's worked with the balloons and works with little cones. Now, one of the things you can do with the little cones is you could do with it over balloons and only go part way, or you can do it over gloves. Uh, rubber gloves can be frozen and this done with. You also can go and just take parchment and make it into shapes and then dribble it onto the parchment and then peel it off of the parchment. It works whether or not the parchment is laid flat or not. And then there are people who just freeform build up hot glue and layers. They make pieces and they build up more and they build up more and make three-dimensional objects out of hot glue. You do a bit and then you do a little and you do a little more and a little more. You can also use hot glue or you can use silicone uh, to go and make effects kind of like this. Now this is where it's good to have that um, a slightly stiffer dribbly kind that is uh, for, um, uh, what is it, um, uh, sealing wax substitute. So you take your chocolate version of the sealing wax and you can put it on shoes like this. You can go and make all these fun sort of effects that are a little tougher than usual. People have done all manner of fun cosplay things with this. Uh, you have it where you're working on hot glue over a pre-existing objects. So you get something like a uh, say one of those plastic forms that you put a bathing suit on at Costco that has a sort of female form and you can build hot glue on up over that and muck it about. You can put it on over a mask if you put enough stuff on to stop it from sticking to uh, uh, whatever your original property is. 
You also can include things like uh, the back of this thing was built with uh, pop tops stuck into it, and thus the pop tops can be used for lacing up the back of this sort of little bustier. Other things to do with hot glue, oh my god. Uh, yeah, you can make these little designs that uh, you can work out while they're in flat form. Uh, and then later stick them on rolls so that you can use the rolls to do three-dimensional molding of uh, things like um, femo clay and other things where you need to go and do uh, that kind of uh, shaping to it. You can also go and uh, do simple stupid things like, hi there, make it so that the bottom of your boots don't slide. And uh, you can use the hot glue to help you make a mold for indentation on the moldable foam stamps uh, that are always just begging for something to figure out to do. So, and we have other things. Obviously, the uh, black swan crown looks as though it is made out of hot glue. <laughs> And everybody who's ever copied it decides to make it out of hot glue as a result. Uh, you can build uh, complex things like the uh, little body armor thing at the far lower left using that by figuring out the pattern in a flat form and then later fusing it together into whole forms. You can uh, fill in those little molded doodads. You can build things up. Uh, that are translucent by going and working with your translucent parts, partly with heat guns and partly with the glue and that. And of course, you can do little bits of jewelry and making all sorts of strange other objects. So uh, that is your introduction to hot glue. On the next class meeting, we will come in and we will do several of these types of things uh, in class and you will make some objects. I will leave that as a surprise for you next.